Hello everyone, a very good evening. So welcome to Math Facilitator. So in today's session, we are going to learn about reflection of light on curved surfaces. And it's going to be a one-shot video. So all those who have any doubt in this chapter or all those who want a quick revision of this chapter will definitely get a very good revision of each and every point. Okay, starting from the basic point, you'll get a perfect revision of every point. And if you have no idea of this chapter, or if you have any doubts in this chapter also, you will get a very quick revision. So let's begin. So it's going to be very interesting and I'm covering each and every point. Okay, and the notes which I'm showing you here will be available in mathfacilitator.com website. Okay, so you can check it out from there. And it's completely free. So look into the very first uh, topic, reflection of light. This is a one-shot revision notes which I'm giving you. So we all know that light is a form of energy. Okay, whatever we have learned earlier also, I'm just revising it once. Light is a form of energy. Okay, and it gives us a sensation of vision, which means if there is no light, okay, you, you have no vision, you cannot see anything, right? Light itself is invisible, but makes the thing visible. How beautiful. Light is invisible, okay? But it makes the other things visible. If there is no light, you cannot see anything. Visible light is electromagnetic radiation. This you will learn in chapter number six. You will see how light waves travel, okay? So it is electromagnetic radiation belonging to a particular part of electromagnetic spectrum, okay? And you know invisible light, okay, there are different colors. Yes, in chapter number six, when we are discussing there, again, we shall have a discussion on this again, okay? The object which has its own light is called luminous object, okay? The object which has light of its own is called luminous object. Example, which has light of its own? Sun, lamp, the bulb, the tube light, okay? All these are luminous objects which have light of their own, okay? In our day-to-day -day, uh, life, we see several phenomena like twinkling of stars, image formation, rainbow colors, etc., right? So let us see, let us see how are these things happening. So let us discuss about the properties of light first. Light is an electromagnetic wave, okay? It does not require any medium to travel. It's an electromagnetic wave. It doesn't require any medium to travel. It possesses both particle nature and wave nature. Okay. So it has both particle as well as wave nature of light. And it always travels in straight line. All these are basic things which you should know before you are starting the chapter. Though it is not there in the textbook, I have given some uh, you know basic information. If in case, if a one mark objective bit is given, so you should be able to answer, isn't it? That's why I covered all the points. So it will be more than your textbook, okay? All points covered in a very short time. Extra points covered also, okay? And because of light, shadows are formed, okay? And what is the speed of light? Speed of light? Yes, 3 lakh kilometer per second. And the color phenomenon is also because of the presence of light. And reflection, refraction and absorption are also because of light. Okay, the interaction of light with any surface. You have reflection, refraction and absorption. And ray of light is the line drawn in the direction of propagation of light. So suppose if the light is traveling in, say, if I say light is traveling in this direction, so we draw it as a ray starting from a source so it just travels in a direction okay so look at the next point these are all you know basic things which you should know a beam of light is a bundle or group of rays emitted from a source together okay so i have i brought the pictures also here to show you see here this is parallel beam of light ray okay so a group of light rays coming together and this is divergent beam. Divergent beam means from a source point, the light rays are diverging like this. Okay, what is happening? Parallel is they are coming like this. Divergent means from a point, they are diverging this way. Okay, convergent light rays. See the next one, convergent light rays. Convergent light rays are 
the rays are coming from some distant object and they are converging at a point. Okay, they are coming like this and converging at a point. Okay, so yeah, now let us look into the definitions. Convergent beam, a group of light rays, they meet at a point. Okay, divergent, they spread out. A group of light rays, they spread out from a point. Parallel beam, a bundle of parallel light rays just going like this, they never meet. Okay, so these are three different beam of light rays which you can see. Okay, parallel, convergent, divergent. So I hope the basic things are clear for you. Basically, light is a form of energy and it's an electromagnetic. Uh, light is in the form of electromagnetic waves. It doesn't require any medium to travel. And uh, the colors, the reflection, refraction, absorption, all these are because of light. Okay, and anything which can emit light by itself is called luminous object. Clear till here? And these are the different types of beams of light. Yes. Now, loss of reflection. You have learned this also in your earlier classes. There are two laws of reflection as we know. And uh, see here, the first law, angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. Yes, it should be your favorite one. Angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. Incident ray, reflected ray and normal, they all lie on the same plane. Okay, these are the two laws of reflection which you have already learned. I'm just revising what you have already learned. Now look at the mirrors, okay? So there are different types of mirrors. First one is plane mirror, okay? And a plane mirror is generally what we use to look into in at our homes where when you get ready, what you look at is a plane mirror, okay? So a plane mirror is a flat glass, okay? A flat glass polished with silver paint on the either side. If you observe any mirror, Okay, it will be polished with silver paint on the other side. Clear? So, a coat of red paint is required over the silver polish to protect the silver layer. Above it is silver polish. Okay, so a coat of red paint is also done to protect the silver polish. Okay, so this is a plain mirror. No, nothing much to remember. It is actually not there in your 10th uh, textbook. I just took the definition to help you understand because we are now going to learn about spherical mirrors. Okay, we are going to learn about spherical mirrors. But you should know what are plane mirrors also. This you already learned in 8th class. Okay, so and you learned how reflection happens on plane mirrors. Right, yes, see now how image is formed in plane mirrors. When two rays actually meet or appears to meet at a point, then image is formed. Okay, when two rays are coming and meeting at a point, at that point, image is formed. Plane mirror always forms virtual and direct. You cannot see the image. The image is, you know, you feel like the image is inside the mirror. So, somewhere the rays are going and converging at a point, okay, behind the mirror. And they are erect. You will see the object upright. Okay, you will not see ultra object. You will see upright object. The distance of object from the mirror is same as the distance of the image from the mirror. Object distance and image distance is same in a plane mirror. And size of the object and size of the uh, image is also same. Okay, distance is same, size is also same. And plane mirror always form laterally inverted image. So, 8th class, there was one important question. Lat lateral inversion. So, left looks, looks like right, uh, right looks like left. Uh, okay, even alphabets look in the, uh, you see it in the reverse order, right? So, lateral inversion so till here you have learned in your previous class okay loss of reflection what is reflection what is light uh, what is plane mirror all this you have learned in the previous class now from this point okay what we are going to start right now is your 10th class okay so now in 10th class you are introduced to a very new topic called spherical mirrors okay so let us see what are the spherical mirrors there are two types of spherical mirrors. Okay, actually mirrors are of two types. Plane and spherical. Plane you already learned in your earlier classes. Now spherical mirrors are of two types. Concave. Convex. About this we are going to learn in your 10th class. Okay, so concave and convex. Now, what is concave, convex? Okay, concave mirrors are like this. Convex mirror is like this, which means, let me show you here. Okay, 
okay this side is a mirror surface okay so see how is the mirror surface it is like a cave it is like a cave the polished surface it's like a cave so it is called concave mirror here this side this is a mirror surface how is the mirror surface it is like bulged out this side okay it is it is bulging out it's called convex okay so let us look at the definition there are two types of spherical mirrors concave and convex concave mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards okay where is the reflecting surface it is curved inwards so see here i told you this is the this side is a mirror surface reflecting surface it is curved inwards inside it is like a cave this is a mirror okay this side so it is also called converging mirror the other name of concave mirror is converging mirror okay all the right rays come and converge at a point as it converges parallel beam of light falling on it okay so th there is one important use of this mirror also we will discuss as we are going uh, deeper into the subject so concave mirror is basically this this is a mirror surface this is a non reflecting surface and see how did i uh, represent the non reflecting surface on the screen the non reflecting surface is with uh, see i said this inside is a mirror isn't it so outside this is a non reflecting surface a polished part yes so the painted part so you are representing with these lines understood yes now look at the next definition convex convex whose reflecting surface is curved curved outwards it is like this it is bulging out curved outwards okay this is a mirror now this is a non reflecting surface okay it is also called diverging mirror okay convex is called diverging concave is called converging okay this is concave it is called converging mirror convex is called diverging mirror why are they called so we will learn when we are you know doing the ray diagrams and all you will learn better so till here is it clear so they diverge the parallel beam of light falling on it okay so two types of mirrors are there i hope this is clear for you yes now let us look into the differences of concave and convex mirror so just see here whatever we discussed some extra points added to it very important question this is very very important question so see a mirror is called concave mirror if its reflecting side is bulging outwards sorry bulging inwards like this okay it is inwards the reflecting surface is inwards okay that is inside of the spherical mirror convex mirror is it is outwards okay it is bulging outwards the reflecting surface is the mirror is outwards when parallel rays are incident concave mirror they converge that's why concave is called converging just now we have learned now convex when parallel rays are coming convex rays diverge okay they diverge from the focus these convex converge at the focus okay now what are focus and all also let us discuss third point concave mirror always forms not always only if there is one case where it will form virtual image i'll tell you that so it will form real and inverted image except when the object is placed between the focus and the pole so these points again i will repeat after explaining you the ray diagram so that you will understand better okay convex will form virtual image virtual and erect image in all the cases it will form only virtual and erect whatever i am highlighting are important words okay convex forms virtual and erect concave forms real and inverted only in one case it will form virtual image okay what is that one case we will discuss concave mirror magnifies the image of the object at all positions except when the object is placed at the center of curvature okay convex mirror produces diminished image in convex image uh, mirror you get a diminished image smaller images you get okay in concave you get magnified images so look into the next one the image formed by concave mirror can be produced and seen on a screen because they are forming real images okay they can be seen on a screen whereas convex images are virtual images virtual images cannot be seen on a screen examples of concave mirror include reflecting telescopes torch light uh automobile headlights all these are concave mirrors 
whereas convex mirrors are optical instruments right side uh, mirrors of the vehicles okay mirrors of the calling bell or in near parking also they use so these are some uses of the spherical mirrors in total so some terms you might be a little confusing for you okay those who don't know the chapter at all but now when i'm doing the ray diagrams and all it will be clear and again i'll come back to this differences and i'll tell you what it is now some terms we have already used here okay that's what i said it might be a little confusing so look at the terminology so once we finish all this again we shall come back to the differences between concave and convex and revised ones so see here important terminology principal axis what is principal axis so see here suppose if i take any mirror suppose i'm taking this spherical mirror okay i'm taking a concave one see here this is called pole okay the center of the mirror is called pole the center of the mirror okay exactly the geometrical center of the mirror is called pole clear and uh, suppose if i if i you know uh, all parallel beam of light rays if i am incidenting on this mirror okay they all come and meet at a point they all come and meet at a point okay that point is called focal point okay and uh, if i join draw a line like this joining the pole and the focal point this is called principal axis so again point number 1 what is point number 1 look at this point pole so point number 1 is pole pole is nothing but the center of the mirror suppose if this is a mirror the center of the mirror this is called pole simple second if there is a line joining the pole and the focal point this line is called principal axis okay till here is it clear now look at the next one center of curvature center of curvature is the part of the mirror it is denoted by c okay and uh, which part of the mirror i'll tell you now so c suppose if this is c center of curvature center of curvature is nothing but the point where all the normals okay this is the point where all the normals meet you have a activity in your textbook the very first activity you take a uh, in any any plain cardboard or uh, the sole of the shoe something you take and you keep nails on it okay Th then just bend it like this then what happens all the nails will come and meet at this point right so this point is called center of curvature okay so all these nails are actually normal they are perpendicular to the surface so all these nails are we can call it as normals now all these are also normals when the surface is curved like this so no normals are at different points right so these normals are meeting at a point and this point is called center of curvature okay look at the text one focus i already discussed what is focus when parallel beam of light is incident on the spherical mirror after reflection they appear okay they meet or they appear to meet at the focus okay so as i said if parallel light are coming they all come and meet at the focus okay so like this is it clear next focal length focal length is nothing but the length of the line joining the pole and the focus okay so and is denoted by the small letter f so once again these are important terminology so once again see suppose if i have a spherical mirror this midpoint is called pole i want answers from you this midpoint is called pole suppose if i am drawing a line through pole and focal point this line is called principal axis so the line joining the pole and focal point is called principal axis suppose light rays are parallel they are parallel like this incident parallel like this all these light rays will pass through focal point okay they are all passing through the focal point okay and uh, all the normals okay all the normals 
let me represent it with different color all the normals to the surface suppose these are normal to the surface all the normals like this they come and meet at the point called center of curvature all the normals come and meet at a point called center of curvature i showed you here so. clear and the distance between okay now, now look at the next point this is pole this is focal point the distance between the pole and the focal point is called focal length denoted by small f clear now all the terminologies okay and also radius of the curvature is nothing but you know if you complete the spherical mirror like this if you complete the circle okay that it will be the midpoint of the circle of the sphere what you are completing okay so that is radius of the curvature and it is the point where all the normals come and meet okay this this activity you might have learned right all the normals will come and meet normals means anything which is perpendicular to the surface is called normal now look in look look into the next topic ray diagram there are certain rules we should follow to make ray diagram okay what are those rules let us see now if you know these rules now drawing ray diagrams is easy a beam of parallel rays parallel rays always passes through focus first point a beam of parallel rays suppose this is pole this is the focal point okay this is the center of curvature if there are a beam of parallel rays like this okay after reflection what do they do they will always pass through the focal point okay if the beam is coming parallel they should pass through focal point any ray coming parallel to the principal axis sh should pass through focal point is it clear it is coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection what, what it should do it should pass through focal point clear second point in case of concave mirror the reflected ray converges at focus okay whereas in case of convex it will diverge at focus because uh, for convex now this is all concave which we are discussing okay convex means this part okay this is the uh, reflecting surface is this side okay so here your pole will be this is the pole okay focal point is here actually mirror reflecting surface is this side so light ray comes here like this right but but light ray reflects into the same surface it reflects like this but when you extend backwards it will appear that it is passing through the focal point understood so you can say see here these rays are coming and meeting at the focal point whereas this ray is coming and reflect bouncing back okay they come and bounce back actually so they diverge okay they diverge this side but they appear to converge on the other side okay so how do they diverge now if you just observe this figure so if i extend from here so you get rays like this like this so look at the first convergent ray divergent ray which i showed you here so it looks something like this okay so they diverge from the focus what does it mean so if i am taking a convex mirror what type of mirror is this convex okay how did i know convex because these lines which i have drawn now these lines tells us the non reflecting surface so reflecting surface is this side bulged outwards okay so when i am drawing this is a pole this is a focal focal point is always inside remember always within the mirror within the circular path only you will have f and c inside this side only okay so if it is concave also what type of mirror is this now if i draw like this what mirror is this concave see this is the reflecting surface this side okay so if i complete the circle this is the focal point this is the center of curvature is it clear always within the circle it has to be whether it is concave or convex okay within the circle you will have the pole or the center of curvature and the focal point okay so now see here now in a convex surface this is a convex mirror isn't it 
so i am taking a parallel beam of light what happens reflection means it will go into the same medium right so, but when i extend this it will appear that it is coming from the focal point similarly this side also if i see a reflecting uh, a ray incident so it will also reflect but if i extend it will appear as if it is coming so how is this figure actually from f the rays are going like this look at the rays how are the rays going you feel that the rays are diverging from the focal point whereas if you take this this is concave mirror isn't it so here i can incident always remember light you will incident only on the reflecting surface okay so this side if i incident so what happens the ray will come back and it will directly pass through the focal point okay if i incident like this still the ray will come back and it will pass through the focal point so what is happening here actually the diverging rays the different rays are coming and all those rays if you see here how it is these rays are coming and converging in the focal point only this part you observe the rays are coming and converging in the focal point is it clear now yes so the incident ray when passes through focus will go parallel to the principal axis okay one thing we have learned see here if this is a mirror let it be convex or concave okay if there is a light ray parallel what happens to this light ray it will pass through the focal point okay if it is concave like this this is focal point passing parallel will pass through the focal point simple okay here they will converge all will come and converge at the focal point here they appear to diverge at the focal point okay because if i draw one more ray what happens it will go like this so these rays are diverging okay they are going like this whereas in concave the rays all converge they come and meet at the focal point clear ma till here if the rays are parallel to the principal axis they meet at the focal point second point suppose see here second point if there is a light ray passing through the focal point okay if there is a light ray passing through the focal point it will go see suppose if i'm incidenting a light ray from the focal point like this this is a light ray from the focal point i have incident so it will go parallel to the principal axis just the reverse just the reverse so earlier what we were doing if there is there was a light ray parallel to the principal axis it was going through focal point now what am i saying if there is a light ray going through the focal point it will go parallel to the principal axis okay so if light ray is parallel it will go it will pass through the focal point if the light ray is passing through focal point it will go parallel to the principal axis clear now see the next one the ray incident on spherical mirror passes through center of curvature returns back why because center of curvature is the point where all the normal center sect each and every definition which i which i explained is important center of curvature is the point where all the normals intersect so already you know if a light ray is incident through the normal it will reflect back so here if it is coming from the center of curvature okay if the ray is through the center of curvature what happens it is actually normal to the surface isn't it so it will reflect back it will again come back in the same direction understood suppose if it is coming like this in this direction so again it will come back in the same direction clear so that is the next point the ray incident to the pole of the mirror reflection makes equal angle with the principal axis okay as since i have no angle of reflection is equal to angle of incident so the incident ray at the pole okay to the pole of the mirror makes equal angle at the reflection angle also okay this is not so important for us but whatever i said the first four points if a ray is parallel to the principal axis it will pass through focus 
if a ray is passing through focus it will go parallel to the principal axis okay just understand this way if a ray is parallel to the principal axis it will pass through focus if it is coming from focus it will go parallel to the principal axis next point if a ray is coming from the center of curvature okay if if it is incident through the center of curvature it will come back in the same direction okay it will reflect in the same direction because center of curvature is the point where all the normals are meeting so if you are incidenting the light through the center of curvature which means you are incidenting it normal to the surface so it will come back clear these points are clear for you in concave mirror they converge convex mirror they diverge okay now look at look at the ray diagrams when the object is at infinity if the object is somewhere at infinity you will feel that the rays are parallel okay so this is the first activity which you have in your textbook the sun the sun rays okay you see it is like a point object the such a big sphere is actually like a point you will see it as a point in the uh, textbook activity if you see you will see in the figure it is like a point it is caught on the real screen with the concave mirror right so such a big sun is like a point object it is so far now how did you get that how did you get that point and this point is actually called focal point the point where you found the image is a focal point how did you get this point all the rays see this was a sun actually which was at infinity from the sun rays were coming like this and all the rays are incident on the mirror okay such a big sun rays were coming from the sun like this okay from far and they are incident on the mirror then what happened then what happened since the rays are coming from very long so how are these rays they are actually parallel how are these rays they form a parallel beam the first beam which i showed you know parallel beam so when the rays are parallel to the principal axis what do they do when rays are parallel when rays are parallel to the principal axis they actually pass through whom they should pass through focus important point okay so these rays are parallel so how how do they pass they are going through the focus okay these are see i'm highlighting see i'll highlight otherwise see here these parallel ray will pass through focal point okay and which type of mirror is this first of all concave mirror see this is a non reflecting surface isn't it so again light rays coming from here it will pass through the focal point and one more thing remember concave or convex the light ray will always is always incident on the reflecting surface okay don't uh, incident the light ray this side don't incident on the polished surface okay you know very well why hmm? yes is this is the first one is it clear yes so this this was the first activity which you have seen also so such a big sun you will see it as a point object okay the image formed so let us discuss about the image the image position is at f at focal point they will meet i told you at f they will meet okay and how is the nature of the image you can you can find it you can catch it on the screen okay so it is real so it is real and it is inverted okay it should be actually inverted because sun it is a spherical object okay you are getting a point the image is like a point so you don't know whether it is inverted or not but usually the image has to be real and inverted in all concave let me tell you this point also in all concave mirrors images are real and inverted only in one case the image is not uh, real and inverted i'll tell you that case also now, now we will discuss okay but remember all real in images are inverted confuse about you all real images are inverted only all virtual images are correct okay so re remember that way as of now you just remember all real images are inverted so second case first case was what object was at infinity rays are coming parallel okay where, where was the object it was at infinity rays were coming parallel so how how like this they were coming parallel and how did they go they all went through the focal point okay so wherever the rays are converging wherever the rays are meeting image will be formed there okay wherever they come and meet there only the image will be formed is it clear next 
साइज ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट इज पॉइंट साइज और हाईली डिमिश वेरी वेरी स्मॉल यस लुक एट द नेक्स्ट वन वेन ऑब्जेक्ट इज बियॉन्ड सी वेर इज सी सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर एंड वन मोर पॉइंट आई फॉर गॉट टू टेल यू हियर आई टोल यू नो द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन फोकल लेंथ एंड पोल इज कॉल फोकल पॉइंट एंड द पोल इज कॉल एफ फोकल लेंथ एंड दिस डिस्टेंस ऑल्सो विल बी सेम ओके बिटवीन सी एंड एफ सो नाउ प्लीज सी हियर Now we are going to see when the object is beyond C. What is C? C is nothing but center of curvature. Okay. What is center of curvature? If I make this, this is a spherical mirror, no? So if I complete the circle, if I complete the circle, the center of curvature is the center of the circle. Okay. That is one point. What is second point? Center of curvature is nothing but the point where all the normals. What are all these green lines which I am drawing? They are all normals. All the normals will come and meet at this. center of curvature clear ma so i hope no doubt what is center of curvature is clear to you yes now what are we doing we are uh, placing the object where is the object object is beyond center of curvature where is the object beyond beyond means after center of curvature okay here you have center of curvature object is after center of curvature let us see how how does the image form now very carefully you see we are taking two rays one ray is parallel to the principal axis and how does it go we already learned any ray any ray parallel to principal axis will pass through focus any ray passing through focus will go parallel to principal axis these two points we know so these two rays we are taking okay see how is the ray first ray from the point a a ray is taken parallel to principal axis so wh what will it do it will pass through the focal point okay then second ray is taken see second ray is taken from the point a second ray is taken passing through the focal point okay so this second ray how will it go yes second ray we have taken passing through the center of curvature so center of curvature ray will again come back okay it will again come back and you can take a ray passing through the focal point how does how does this ray come it will come back parallel to the principal axis okay so the point where these rays are meeting this point is a point a okay because all these rays came from which point from a isn't it all these rays are meeting at which point a so there point a image is formed now where is b image formed see here point b see light rays from point b are coming like this okay they are passing through the principal axis principal axis is also normal okay so they will come back the rays passing through the principal axis will actually come back okay so b will be here only exactly on the principal axis b will be formed here only on the principal axis okay b is formed here only on the principal axis a is formed here and how is the size of the image it is inverted b is up a is down now see image b is up a is down okay actually a was the top a is down now so it is inverted and it is real okay it is forming in front of the mirror only so it is real and you can catch all real images you can catch it on a screen okay and uh, the size of the image is diminished clear clear with this so now the question is how do i draw this madam so if this is a concave mirror so this is the pole this is the focal point this is the center of curvature and where is the object for us object is beyond the center of curvature here <coughs> after center of curvature so from this point first ray is coming how does it go parallel it is coming so it will go like this then second ray how, what did i do i have taken from the focal point okay they should meet actually here Draw with scale, neatly correct lines. You draw. 
they will go and they they will go and meet at the focal point okay one more ray we have taken from the center of curvature one second this is a focal point proper rays you draw with the scale Scalage where is very much needed. My rays are not at all proper. Okay, then they will pass like this. So here the point where both these rays are meeting, this is the image. If this is A B, this will be B A. So the image is between C and F. Understood? So with scale properly, you draw two lines are enough. Okay, what are the two lines I told you? One parallel to focal point and other passing through the focal point. Okay, so one you will draw like this, go like this through the focal point. Second, you will draw through the focal point, you will show it is parallel. Okay, yes. Next, I hope till here it is clear. Once you need to practice. Now look at the next one. When the object is at to C, exactly at to C, at the center of curvature. Okay. So, uh, see, AB is the object at the center of curvature. From A, I have taken a ray parallel. Only two rays we are taking, isn't it? One ray parallel to the principal axis. Parallel ray will pass through focal point. Understood, ma? Till here, is it clear? Now, let us see the next one. One ray I am taking through the focal point. A ray through the focal point will pass parallel. These are the two rays. Done. So, these two rays are meeting at this point so this is point a and exactly whenever the object is at c you will the image is also at c in the reverse order see this is the object this will be the image okay images of same size it is real and inverted okay so how are we drawing this if this is a spherical mirror this is a pole concave mirror okay focal point center of curvature object is here How do we do? First line parallel to the principal axis, it will pass through focal point. <coughs> second, second passing through focal point. So from this point only passing through focal point. Then, then what will it do? It will come parallel to the principal axis. So exactly at this point, you should get the image. So one tip for you is, see here, one tip is, First to see where you should get the image. So somewhere here, exactly same size means. So take it through the focal point, join it here. Okay, these two lines should meet. Exactly through the focal point. See, my lines are very crooked. I'm so sorry for that. So like this. With scale neatly you draw. Here, see these points are important because when we are correcting, no. These are the common mistakes we find. All this should meet at a point. Okay. Here also this should meet at a point exactly in the same line. Okay. This is the object and this is the image. Clear now? So if it is at C, same, same size, real, inverted and at C only you will get the image. Beyond C, the image is formed between F and C and it is diminished real and inverted okay at infinity the object uh, the image is formed at focal point f and it is point sized highly diminished okay so look at the next one next uh, case between f and c what is between f and c f and c you see here very close if you look into the table at the end of your textbook you will find this table uh, at infinity Okay, th then you will have this case beyond uh, uh, center of curvature. Then you will have uh, at the center of curvature. Then you will have between F and C. So these figures are not there in your textbook, but I have taken it because the table is there in the textbook. Okay, you should have an idea because for two marks also they will ask you to complete the ray diagram. You should know. So the object is here. Ma. Where is it? It is between F and C. Okay, where is the object between F and C? So let us see what is happening. So if the object is between F and C, I have taken 
a line parallel to the principal axis it will pass through the focal point this is clear right second i cannot take a line passing through the focal point okay so what are we doing second we are taking a line passing through the center of curvature here okay through center of curvature it will come back no the incident ray will just come back so only one line this this see here at center of curvature what happens it will go like this okay it will go like this then the incident ray will come back in the same direction so the point where these two are meeting this is the image and how is the image size you see enlarged how is the image size enlarged okay so it is bigger than the object see object is only this much image is enlarged and is real and inverted clear till here all images which are forming on the same side if object and image are on the same side all these are real images okay object and image if, are, if they are on the same side they are real images and where is the image see after the point c so beyond c this is useful for your table also ma okay yes now look at the next one all these notes will be given to you so you don't have to worry at all when object is placed at f okay if object is at the focal point here exactly at the focal point so first one parallel ray passing through the focal point over second second ray from the center of curvature we are taking okay how are these rays now see if i extend the rays these rays are actually parallel okay they are not meeting see here they are not meeting so where is the image formed we don't know somewhere at infinity it can be formed okay image can be formed somewhere at infinity clear so <coughs> and how is the nature of the image it will be real only somewhere at infinity it will be formed and it will be highly enlarged somewhere at infinity means how, how will the rays uh, how is the image highly enlarged clear so this is actually reverse of the first case do you remember first case what is the first case when object is at infinity image was at focal point and highly diminished point size real and inverted remember first case now this case is when object is at focal point image will be at infinity okay just the opposite and how is the image highly enlarged okay they are highly diminished first and fifth case are opposite see next one when object is placed between p and f between p and f means very close to the mirror between p and f till now we placed object beyond c at to see between f and c okay now we are placing it still closer to the mirror we are moving this side still closer to the mirror okay at on f also we placed now we moved still closer where did we move then between f and c so when now this is a special case this is a special case i'll give you the notes okay so yes what is in the special case see here in the special case object is very close to the mirror when it is very close one ray i am taking through the center of curvature so what will happen it will again come back in the same direction second ray we are taking see here second ray we have taken here so second ray is here once yes if i take a ray parallel to the principal axis it will pass through the focal point like this okay this is given in the textbook in your textbook second ray is like this but what i have taken is one more ray see here i have taken a ray making some angle at the pole okay it will make same angle and it will reflect isn't it so this ray i have taken making some angle at the pole angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection so it will come back like this now here if you see all these rays are coming back like this but they are not meeting but if you extend the rays backwards like this if you extend the rays backwards what happens all these rays will meet at a point behind the mirror i told you if the object and the image are on the same side real images are formed here the object is this side image is this side so this image is virtual image okay so that's why this is a special case okay so virtual image is formed when the object is very close to the 
mirror okay so you see your magnifying lens virtual image is formed and it is erect okay it is not upside down see a is on the top here also a is on the top erect image so such images are called erect and it is also enlarged okay remember this case very important so they may ask you a question draw the ray diagrams for different positions of the uh, object in a concave mirror so all these ray diagrams six cases clear okay so please go through it and see now whatever we discussed are here let's go through it quickly if the object is at infinity image is at f and it is real and inverted and is point sized the reverse of this i told you if the object is at focus image is at infinity okay it is real and inverted only all cases real and inverted only only last case is virtual and highly enlarged here you will get point size very small here highly enlarged image okay and uh, i told you this is a special case if the object is between p and f pole and the focal point very close to the mirror then position of the image will be behind the mirror and will be virtual and direct different and enlarged okay and uh, next case is if it is far from beyond the center of curvature then image will be between f and c and it will be diminished real and inverted diminished at the c image also at the c same size okay inverted and real between f and c if you have it will be far from c these two are reverse actually okay these two are reverse i'll make it same color okay you you learn these two together at uh, if the object is uh, beyond c image is between f and c if the object is between f and c then image is far from c okay here it will be diminished here it will be enlarged okay these two are reverse two pink color whatever i highlighted are reverse two green color whatever i hi i highlighted are reverse okay read it like that then only you will remember okay then at c is a different case already i told you this is different at c same size okay between f and uh, p and f is also different case okay you will get a enlarged image so any doubt till here in the session and if you think each and every point is being covered uh, it is very useful for you please do like the video okay and uh, i'm trying to cover such a big chapter in a very small 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 time so we are almost done also okay so look into the uses of concave mirror very important short question so concave mirror are used in search lights vehicle headlights torches etc okay and we use it as shaving mirror very important use only three four uses you should remember them they are important dentists use it okay to see the enlarged teeth where and where uh, my question when do you see enlarged image when the object is very close between f and c image is enlarged okay and in solar furnace large concave mirrors are used to converge the solar heat you have one topic at the end of the textbook solar cooker okay where, what is the concept in solar cooker all the rays come like this from the sun and they all converge at the point isn't it at a point focal point so here heat is all all the sun rays are focused at a point so it heats up more and more and you can use the solar energy if you remember both of the magnifying lens you see you keep it under the sun so at after some time if if you take a paper and focus the sun rays on it so after some time it will burn why because constantly heat energy is focused at a single point so it will burn similarly here also in solar cooker the concave mirror is converging it has converging property isn't it so all the sun rays it will focus at a point so heat is concentrated at this point and slowly it will heat more okay so you can use it in cookers also solar furnace also okay large concave mirrors are used not the smaller ones there okay so dentist solar cooker or solar furnace shaving mirror headlights or torch all these are uses of concave mirror now let us see convex mirror ray diagram concave mirror you have learned the rules no convex also same rules but the mirror is in reverse here you see this is a reflecting surface now okay earlier see this was the reflecting surface clear 
yes now what shall we do see here so i told you wherever you can complete the circle that side only you will write f and c okay wherever you can complete the circle that side only f and c so this side i wrote f and c because i can complete the circle on the other side this is clear no for you okay small things which uh, some will not explain so because of that there will be lot of confusion ekara ali f c so see here wherever the circle is completed there you will write f and c so convex mirror so it is bulged outside so this is a mirror mirror side is this side okay so yes now let us see a ray parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus but here focus is not there so it will go like this okay but if you extend it backwards this it will come from the focus so this side also you see ray parallel will come like this but if you extend backwards so you will see that from the focal point rays are going like this okay from the focal point you feel that rays are coming like this okay so that's why it is called diverging what is it called diverging mirror okay so if object is at infinity same case object is at infinity rays will come parallel and they you feel that they are diverging from the focal point okay so nature of the image is virtual and erect and position is at f at f you feel wherever the point the rays are meeting there the image is formed here you feel like they are meeting at f so image is there okay point sized yes see the next case when object is placed between pole and infinity okay between pole and infinity so image how is it formed see here i'll highlight it is passing yes parallel okay so it will go like this okay so when you extend you will feel it is passing through the focal point next uh, they have taken one more ray here okay this ray is actually passing through the center of curvature so it will reflect back okay so where, where are both the rays meeting exactly at this point so their image is formed and how is the image diminished okay and it is virtual in convex mirrors always virtual images only form okay diminished and virtual so this is very important in convex mirrors diminished images are formed okay diminished images are formed in concave how was the virtual image in concave sixth case do you remember special case see here only i'll show in concave how was the virtual image enlarged okay remember in convex how in convex virtual images are formed but how are the virtual images diminished a smaller size okay so see here this is the table full length image of a tall building or tree can be seen in a small convex mirror okay see here if object is at infinity then position of the image is at focus and it is virtual and direct this is for convex mirror we are talking okay and this point size object at focus point size if the object is between pole and infinity means somewhere closer not at infinity somewhere closer if you are bringing it will be between p and f here it will form okay closer to the mirror only it will form and it is virtual and erect but it is diminished smaller in size okay so convex mirror always diminished image images only you will form concave always real and direct only in one case you will find virtual image but virtual and enlarged bigger size uses of convex mirror convex mirror is used as rear view mirror okay because it it forms big object also small image it will form okay and in shops it is used as security mirror because small mirror if you keep entire area you can look into the mirror and see who is there who is not there okay cctv also does the same danger uh, at danger turns uh, near the opposite turn they will keep the mirror like this so, so that you can see who is coming from that side from far if they are coming also you will see the image here small image if lorry is coming you can see the lorry image here and you can be careful at turnings it is used okay so these are the uses of convex mirror concave mirror okay now next topic sign convention done we we are done with the most important topics now very small topic sign convention if the object is 
above you will measure this as positive ma if the object is below okay this if you are measuring below the principal axis you will take it as negative height if it is above the principal axis it is positive simple and now if this is a direction of the light okay always remember one important thing all distances all distances you will measure from pole okay whatever is there from the pole only you will start and measure so if i want to measure from the distance this distance from the pole only from here i should start measuring okay from the pole only i should come okay if i want to measure this distance also from the pole only i should see how much is the distance okay so here this point is clear right so according to this point now one thing we have to understand if the direction of the light ray is in this direction you measure the distance from this direction right so they are opposite so then the distance you take it as negative okay opposite distance is taken as negative is it clear if if an if something if an object is here for example light ray is incident in this direction from the pole you are measuring the distance means in this direction then this distance is taken as positive okay so light if the distance is opposite to the incident ray it is taken as negative if the distance is in the same direction of the light ray it is taken as positive if the height is above the principal axis positive height below the principal axis negative okay and all distances are measured from the pole only okay the same thing here again i mentioned see here object is always placed to the left of the mirror all distances are measured from the pole okay distances which are measured in the direction of the light ray are positive distances measured opposite to the direction of the light ray are negative all distances measured above principal axis are positive all distances measured below principal axis are negative okay object distance is always negative focal length of concave mirror is negative when convex is where convex is positive okay focal length of concave mirror is always negative and convex mirror is always positive okay so yes this is the mirror formula there is lot of derivation in the textbook no one will ask you in examination just remember the mirror formula for the calculation purposes 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v and here when uh, i'll i'll make a separate video for problems chapter is problems we shall do so when we are doing problems the sign convention is important which is negative distance which is positive distance you should be able to take okay so 1 by f equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v okay v is image distance u is object distance f is focal length focal length is nothing but what the distance between the pole and the focal point this is called focal length small f okay if the object is here okay from here from the pole from the pole to here this is called object distance suppose if the image is formed here okay this is from the distance from here to here from here to here this is called image distance okay so i'm just explaining you roughly so which mirror and all again don't think too much yes next magnification so you will have problems on this and on this okay so magnification is nothing but the ratio of height of the image to the height of the object okay so this is important ratio of height of the image to the height of the object so height of the image by height of the object this is called magnification okay so what is the height of the object and what is the height of the image if i take the ratio it is called magnification okay it will it will take each case in light reflection and refraction either in mirror or lens okay so it is valid that means it is valid for every mirror and every lens okay so this is a formula ma please remember magnification is height of the image by height of the object and also it is equal to minus v by u v is nothing but image distance u is object distance remember this formula very important magnification is h i by h not it is equal to minus v by u definition is important for short problem may come okay part b question may come so important and here see here they they will say magnification is 1 so what is the nature of the image magnification is minus 5 what is the nature of the image you should be able to see okay 
that is depending on these rules see once if m is negative if magnification is negative then the image is real if m is negative then the image is real okay and when it is positive the image is virtual if m is negative image is real if m is positive image is virtual why when will m be negative when height of the image is negative isn't it height of the image negative means it should be measured downward direction no? whenever downward this is principal axis if downward image is formed all these downward images are real images now okay if image is formed here up of the principal axis these are virtual image okay virtual upside you measure positive distance no downside you measure negative distance so if m is negative it is real and if m is positive it is virtual understood and if hi equal to h naught okay and object size and image size is same then m equal to 1 and when it when it, when this case came when it was at the c when the object was at center of curvature do you remember object and image height was same okay <coughs> see the next case if hi is greater than h naught means height of the object is greater than height of the image then magnification should be greater than 1 so enlarged okay remember just remember this this is height of the object this is height of the image if it is same magnification is 1 okay means exactly same if height of the image is greater so it is what type enlarged Okay, if it is enlarged, h i by h naught, this is the magnification ratio, no? So, if numerator is more than denominator, you will get a positive value, okay? Suppose, if if this is bigger, h naught is bigger, denominator is bigger means, here, it will be less than one value, understood? So, if height of the image is smaller, the magnification will be less than one, understood? Because if denominator is more, what happens to the fraction will become less than one okay so see 2 by 5 means if denominator means more it is less than 1 if it is 5 by 2 if numerator is more it will be greater than 1 that is what we are trying to understand magnification of plane mirror is always plus 1 important bit top if m is positive and less than 1 okay it is positive and less than 1 then it is convex mirror okay positive and less than 1 positive means what type positive means above the principal axis you will measure no positive means above the principal axis okay so it is virtual above the principal axis means virtual less than one means when will it be less than one when the image size is less okay so it is diminished image where will you get virtual and diminished image convex mirror so connect the points and learn if m is positive and more than one okay positive means positive means it is also virtual okay more than one means image height is more when is image height more when the object is enlarged okay when do you get enlarged image when it is concave mirror okay the special case i told you no in concave mirror only you will get enlarged image right so these are about the uh, entire thing of the first chapter uh, that is uh, reflection of light at spherical surfaces so i said after going through the entire chapter we shall once see the differences again very quickly within one minute and wind up so concave mirror its reflecting side is bulging inwards this is a reflecting side it is inwards okay light will fall only on the reflecting surface okay not on the polished uh, the coated one okay so and the concave mirror is converging convex mirror is bulging outside okay light falls like this and it is diverging okay and see now pole see if this is convex mirror if this is convex mirror pole is here center of this focal point and center of curvature will be this side this concave mirror okay pole is this one center Focal point center of curvature will be this side. Wherever you can complete the circle, then only you'll write F and C. Okay. <coughs> Next. Concave mirror always forms real and inverted. Only one case it will form virtual image. Okay. Then convex mirror always forms virtual and erect images and small size image it will form. Okay. Concave will form sometimes 
small small size and uh, once it will form bigger size which which case which case will it form bigger size virtual case and the image formed by concave mirror are real images so you can find it on the screen whereas convex is virtual image doesn't need any screen they they are virtual virtual means it is not existing somewhere behind the mirror mirror extends is so you feel like the image is formed there okay you, you feel like the rays are meeting there okay then examples of concave mirror convex mirror we already read separately okay and anything else so this table is also very important which we discussed yes enlarged in one more case also we find enlarged image when when the when the object is between f and c okay between f and c when the object is between f and c enlarged image is, is formed far from c so if this is the concave mirror this is f this is c object is between f and c if i take like this okay the image will be formed somewhere here like this enlarged okay we have seen the ray diagram so that's it for today i hope the entire chapter is very clear for you so one hour 10 minutes so all those who are still watching the class i hope each and every point is clear that's why you are seeing it and the notes will be shared and do like the video and do share it with all your friends whoever are feeling this chapter is difficult okay and uh, i'll try to give you a test also on this chapter very soon so just stay tuned so the things are going on in the channel so subscribe and share it with everyone if the number is big if more people are watching even i feel like doing more work for you so do subscribe and do share it with all your friends bye bye take care